you've recently made the switch from InDesign over to Affinity Publisher and you're trying to figure out like I was, like how do you work with photos? Why are the, why is putting photos so different? It's not really all that different. It just requires a little bit of rethinking. I'm gonna show you how to frame up the photos in Affinity Publisher. Let's go. Oh my gosh, I'm such a dork. Listen, guys, I'm Dave Conry, and I'm an artist designer based in Southern California. And today what we're gonna talk about is Affinity Publisher and how to make sure that you're doing photos the correct way, how you're dropping them into the layout the correct way. When I first started in Affinity Publisher, I struggled with this a little bit because uh, well, it just it just didn't operate the same way that InDesign does. It's not radically different, but it's different enough to make you go, go like, yeah. you know that feeling. Why doesn't this work the same? And so to make it easier on you guys, I'm gonna show you all the different ways that I've learned to work with photos and place them in layouts in Affinity Publisher. We're gonna talk about the place image tool. We're gonna to talk about picture frame tools. We're gonna to talk about dropping in stock. We're gonna talk about how to manipulate between those. We're gonna even talk about how to clip one out of another into another so that you get a really, you'll see what I mean in a bit. By the way, do I look, uh, do I look sharper? Do I look cleaner? Do I look more crisp? That might be because I bought myself a brand new lens. I'm super stoked about this. I've been wanting this lens for a while and I just kind of been putting it off and putting it off, but I decided to finally get the lens that I wanted. So how does it help? I don't know, maybe you've noticed that I kind of go in and out of focus sometimes and that's just because the lens I had on here was an adequate Canon lens, but it wasn't a fantastic Canon lens. So this lens is better. Plus this lens will also do this. Whoop. Hey, what's going on? Extreme close up. Ah! So yeah, it's this uh, Canon EF 10 to 18 millimeter lens and uh, I'm really stoked about it, but uh, it doesn't need to be this close. Let's put it there and then How's that? I don't know, this is way more uh, photography information that you probably wanted or needed to know, but uh, let's clear the table so that we can get into the screen. Okay, before we begin, I just want to address the elephant in the room because I know I'm gonna get questions about this. Yes, this is an Aaron Draplin hat. Yes, he did sign it. Yes, I did have to say that. Yes, I will get the question. Shout out to the big man. Anyway, let's get to work. What you see here on the screen is essentially just a single page. Now imagine if I was making a cover for a magazine or brochure or whatever it is that I'm making. Let's just assume I'm gonna make a simple cover. We're not gonna go the full details of the cover. You can watch my other magazine video, which I will put uh, up there. I'll put it up there. You can go watch that one if you want, but I wanna get to the specifics of pictures as we would drop them in. Got over here on the panel, the stock panel, from Unsplash, I just put in portrait and I just kind of found this image right here, which I thought was pretty interesting. And I'm just gonna drag and drop it. And it's huge, so I'm going to resize it. By the way, make sure you give credit to these people. You don't technically need to give credit because that's how Unsplash works, but I still think it's pretty cool. So make sure you go uh, check out Sam Burris and uh, I will link to him in the description. This is his page on Unsplash. You can go over here, Sam Burris. And uh, he's got quite a bit of shots here, so really nice work. So go check him out, link down below. Now, as you can see, I brought this in just as a photo and that would be the same as me clicking over here at the place image tool. If I click place image tool and I just, uh, let's say I just created, it, let's find a random here. This, this is just completely random. And I just place that, that's my cover for my beacons thing. And it's just, it just places the whole image at size. This one came in at size, I resized it. But now if I just want to make it, like move it or make it smaller, like if I wanted to size it this direction, because it's a complete image, it's not in a box, you are actually changing the dynamics of the photo. And that's the problem, because we don't want to stretch, we don't want to squish, we don't want to do all of that. When you place an image with the place image tool, that's what you get, you get just the image. So if I wanted to bring this into a box that's already created for my cover, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that layer off and then I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna take the picture frame rectangle tool and I'm just gonna draw my rectangle. So now I've got a rectangle, uh, so you can see it better. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it better. And then if I want, I can just drag that image right into that box right there. And it's sized appropriately. Now when I hover over that, you can see I can move it around inside the box. I can rotate it. Or if I double click it, then I can change the dynamics inside the box. If I'm not double click, click off and click back on, now I can change the size of the box without adjusting the image itself. That's the key difference between placing images and placing them in 
a, a picture box. You can also let, add an ellipse picture frame. And I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I'm gonna test this. I'm gonna bring in a shape and I'm gonna bring in a random shape like the donut tool. So I'm gonna bring in my donut. And if I right click on that while it's selected and I go convert to picture frame, it's now picture frame. So that if I drag an image into that box, now it's right there. Let's, let's, uh, let's remove this one. Let's see, you can see exactly what's going on here. How weird is that? That's kind of crazy. It's kind of nuts, right? That's a cool option. You have all of these, you have the picture frame, you have the, the ellipse picture frame, and then you have pictures or drop in a photo but then you can also turn any shape. Whether you use one of these over here on the sidebar or you create your own, you can create any shape and add a photo to it. And all you gotta do is right click on it and say change to picture frame. Let me give you an example. Here's the pen tool and I'm just gonna create random shape. Okay, let's get rid of that image. I don't need that. Oops, I just deleted the, I just deleted the pen thing. Let's do the pen thing. Pen thing, pen thing, pen thing again. Select the tool, then convert to picture frame. And then I'm just gonna drag an image into there. Boom, there you go. Hey, look at that. Ain't she pretty and geometric. And of course, they, the other one in the background is, and that, whoa, that, hey, there we go, modern art. So that's the basics. Any shape that you create, you can drop a photo in. Or if you just wanna drop a photo in, you can just drop a photo in two sides. Just like I can convert a shape into a picture frame, I can do the same thing with a photo. So let's just drop this young lady in here. Right? And she's large as well. So when I resize her just like this, it's changing. Uh, it's, it's, it is constrained to the actual size. And again, again, if I do that, it's squishy. I don't want that. Let's size her down so she's in the frame. Now if I right click, convert to picture frame, you can see now it is a picture frame. Now here's the thing, I'm not, I don't know why, but like for some reason it just, it, it won't, it, it's still constrained and I'm not sure why. I don't know why it's like this. Uh, it's still doing it. It's kind of bizarre. So what I've noticed is that you kind of move that around a little bit. And for some reason, now it works. I don't know what it is. There's probably a reason why it does that. I can move her inside there and adjust that like that. And then I can move it. But when I just convert it and then I move the nodes, it's still constrained. And I'm not exactly sure why. So I just kind of like tweak it a little bit and then... I can move that just like that. It's a weird little quirky thing. I don't know why it does that, but that's what I've noticed it does. So let's go back to our young man right here. I'm going to type just a random word here. Random. Yes, that's literally what I just typed. Change the typeface because no to the Arial. Avetica, bold. Let's do condensed bold. Let's get crazy. Get artsy by bringing it off the page. And change the color to something like that. I want to resize this young gentleman here to make him a little bit fit there because what I want to do is I want to knock him out over the words. This has been a major request for a lot of people so I want to show people what I did to do this. I'm not going to convert this image to a picture frame yet. I'll do that later if I want but right now I'm going to leave it as is and I'll tell you why. As you can see I want to knock out his hair and I'm going to do a really rough job. I'm not going to do super detailed because as you can see he's got some if you zoom in here the detail in his hair is a little bit detailed. So I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do temporarily is I'm gonna take the words away just so I can draw a picture frame with the pen tool. Now you could do this picture frame with anything. You could do it with an ellipse, you could do it with a shape if you wanted to, but I'm gonna use the pen tool to create a shape. I'm just gonna incorporate, I know that I need to get to at least this space right here, right? And I'm giving myself a lot of leeway, but I need to get to this space right here. So I'm gonna create a new layer on top of everything else so I'm gonna hide the words just so I can see it. So now I'm gonna take and the pen tool and just draw, I'm gonna get a loose shape here. If I was doing this for a real magazine situation, I would be a lot more detailed. But as you can see, I'm just using the pen tool to click and drag the, uh, the what do you call it? The, I'm just doing the curves. There's a better word for it, but <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the curves just to kind of get the general idea of where this man's head is. Attach it and now I have myself a frame. So I'm gonna right click just like I did before and convert to picture frame. Now this is where it's important. If I were to just take this other image and drop it right into that picture frame, it's not gonna be right. Right, that's not gonna, that's not, that's not right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my image back here. I'm gonna command C or copy it. Then I'm gonna go and select that and I'm gonna go up here. And I always forget what the key command is, but it's paste inside. Oh, command option B. Doesn't look like much happened. Well, look. 
let's get rid of the main one. Ta-da! I bring in my type again. Now again, it's not perfect. I would go in, I would touch up all these little areas. This image is really dark, so it's a little tough. Oh, I also noticed I've got a little stroke around my picture frame, so get rid of that. We don't want that. Let's have a little headline. Half naked men in wax. Boom, you got yourself a photography zine, just like that. There you go. That's the basics. That's how you work with photos inside Affinity Publisher. If you were scratching your head going, what, how, 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 Now you know. Now you know, you're welcome. And that's all I got for you today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it helped you make things in Affinity Publisher. I hope it uh, makes you more, way more productive. And if you do have any other questions, make sure you go down and you leave those questions in the comments below and maybe I'll address it in another video in the future. While you're headed down there, make sure you hit that like button because when you hit the like button, folks, it gives the video juice. It helps me get all this information out of the world and because I know that there's people asking this question, there's other people that don't see me that are still asking the question that haven't gotten an answer. The more times you hit the like button, the more likely uh, this is gonna get to the people that need it the most. Plus, it's also like saying, hey, thanks, Dave. Finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and then you hit the bell so you never miss a thing. One last thing, I'm dropping a brand new line of uh, t-shirt and products in the, my shop very, very soon. In fact, maybe, uh, not this, not by the time you see this video, but maybe by next week, uh, some of those items will be out and I will be dripping them into the shop over the next few weeks. So if you wanna check some of that out, make sure you go over to my website and go to uh, DaveCondry.com. All the link is in there below. And uh, you know, maybe subscribe to the newsletter in case you wanna find out exactly when everything drops. That's it, I've asked a lot of you guys and I hope uh, I still was able to provide enough value to warrant that. <laughs> All right, I've been Dave, you guys have been awesome. Thank you very much. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya.